Hello, my name's Helen Heath. I'm a professor in the School of Physics at Bristol University, where I'm also one of the university education directors with responsibility for quality. And in the second role, I lead the ad university academic integrity network. Um, I'm going to present some results of a short study we did of our students' attitudes to academic integrity, a thing that's uh, come to the fore in the COVID pandemic. You are probably all signed up to the QAA Academic Integrity Charter, even if you don't know it. Um, and this advocates a whole community approach, both in Principle 1 and Principle 2 of the Charter, which you can find at the link shown. And also, we signed up to engage with and empower students. So our university policy is based on six uh, fundamental values, and those were defined by the International Centre for Academic Integrity. And these six fundamental values are honesty, trust, fairness, respect, responsibility and courage. I think I'd hope that we could all sign up to those. And our session that we ran, that I'm going to talk about, aim to introduce these values to the students and get them to think about how they applied to them. Of course, ethical behaviour is an optional and the Institute of Physics in its accreditation document says that students should gain an appreciation of what constitutes unethical scientific behaviour and they should be required to demonstrate high ethical standards throughout their degree programme. So what we did was we had a presentation on academic integrity in the first year assembly. Uh, so this was a, a whole year assembly. Uh, it was a face to face event held in November 2021. Um, our class size is of the order of 250, although not all students attend every timetable session. And we had anonymous online polling through Mentimeter and a total of 119 students who responded at some point. So this session followed on from an introduction to the labs, which mentioned ethical behaviour in the labs and a tutorial discussion in the second week of term. Uh, which looked specifically at academic integrity and also actually had a rather lab based focus. So uh, students were given a scenario and asked which of the university values they themselves would have violated um, if they'd adopted the behaviour described. Uh, they could choose as many of those values as they wanted and they also had the option to say none of these. Uh, we then asked them to comment on their choices. Scenario one is uh, perhaps quite familiar to those who work with students. Uh, the st uh, they were in the first year lab, they did an experiment and it didn't work. And the student is told that they copied the results from a friend to use for the write-up and asked which of those principles, they, those fundamental values they had violated. And as you can see, uh, there's a range of um, values that they think they violated, although some students thought that there were none of these. They were quite happy that it was perfectly OK to copy the results from a friend. So the first question I wanted to know is whether there was a problem with the form of the assessment. We had five comments around the form of the assessment and we had about 13 justifying their choice, some of which is also linked into that form of assessment. I'll show you some of the comments in a minute. I then split the coffee comments into what I thought would, was an ethical statement, so it was a, a positive reason for having made the choice, or an unethical statement. It's possible, of course, that comments can be in more than one category. So here's some examples, and if we uh, look towards the, the top left, people are saying, oh, it's dishonest to copy, but it's not that bad because we've done the experiment thousands of times a year. Um, it's formative, not summative. It doesn't matter if I copy on a formative assessment. I didn't tell them it was a formative assessment, they've assumed that. There are other reasons. You know, my partner left me alone for dead. I've, I've not had the support I need in some way. Um, and of course the old chestnut, which is I'm paying £9,000, uh, so presumably it's all right to do whatever I want. So those are the sort of justification and maybe comments on this, the sort of experiment we're doing. Um, there are reasons why you might not use the data. So these are the sort of ethical comments because the results are not your own. It's not your data because the use of someone else's data without acknowledgement is lying and it, it's dishonest to forge experimental results. And then there's one here, which is an example of something where there was a justification and, and you might have some sympathy with this student. I think I do. 
Um, say your experiment didn't work, but you were given results from someone else and credit them, it's okay to admit your mistakes. Uh, I've never seen a student credit another one when they've borrowed the results, but um, I can see that there's uh, at least some thought about the ethical behaviour there. I noticed a very strong thread in the ethical comments about it being wrong to use others' data or making up data. And remember that we had had a lab briefing and tutorial guidance on this area discussing why it was wrong to forge results. So I think perhaps the balance of comments here suggests that, that some of that message has got home. So our next scenario was given that students had some coursework to complete. We actually have a number of pieces of coursework in our first year. And it says you're not sure whether you should complete it alone. So you decide to work with a friend. So again, sort of looking at the breakdown, here what we see is a, a lot of justification uh, some of that justification is that I just needed some help with the tasks. And I, again, I'd split a lot of the comments were, were ethical. They were saying why it was wrong and being quite clear on that. So some of it's our fault. If the uni doesn't make it clear, that's their fault. But others feel there is a responsibility. It's irresponsible not to check if you can work with other people. There's a question of fairness. If everyone does it, it would be unfair not to, or it's unfair for those who've worked alone. And then as said, this sort of justification that I can't do it by myself, I'm too dumb to do it alone. One of the things that crops up very regularly is whether it's okay or not to work in a group. They know that working collaborative is a key ability to have. We agree with that. Um, that we tell them to work together. We do, we encourage them to work and discuss. Um, because it's a way okay to work with a friend as long as you learn from each other and are fair about your work. And then, of course, the, in contrast, it defeats the point of having individual assessment. And then some that merge into the, the perhaps beyond the grey area, as long as you change it up a little, it's okay as long as I've fiddled a bit with the answer, so it's not quite the same with my friend. And then not exactly cheating. I don't know where that leaves us. So scenario three and four come together. You hear some other students are planning to work together on an online exam. To be fair, at this point, I don't think the students have done anything wrong. They've only um, heard about it, but you can see that they're definitely feeling there's an honesty and fairness issue. But the next scenario said you hear some other students are planning to work together on an exam and you do nothing. And note that we've shifted in to responsibility and courage. Suddenly now you, you've not done anything. What have you done wrong? You've not taken responsibility and you've not been courageous. But also actually a shift towards none of these. It's nothing to do with me. I've not done anything wrong. And if we analyse those comments a bit, there are 41 comments saying I do nothing. And only one saying I should do something. So for an online examination, it's up to them if they work better in groups or alone. Their mark doesn't affect other people's marks. I don't like confrontation. I think we can all um, have some sympathy with that. I'd rather focus on myself and do my best. It's not your responsibility. And rather distressingly, the university shouldn't operate on a trust-based system because given the opportunity, people are always going to cheat and you need to implement stuff to stop cheating. So my comments, and this is clearly work in progress, is students did seem to have grasped that not using your own ex experimental data was wrong. And even those who were prepared to do it on several occasions said, but you need to credit it. So that message had got through. For coursework, students were finding the difficulty between collaboration and collusion a bit difficult to navigate and I have some sympathy because we do encourage them to work together and it's where to draw that boundary in coursework that can be challenging so that's uh, some work needs to be done but the student view is that other students cheating is nothing to do with them and it doesn't have any effect on their marks and perhaps there's a message that needs to be got through there that it does have an effect on the perception, external perception of the quality of the degree that they're going to get. And my conclusion would be that we were a long way from the whole community approach that's being advocated, at least with first year students in their first term.